I want to get get want to get into the uh, to the crux of today's discussion, um, and it's and it's going to be that quote unquote COVID relief, the COVID stimulus bill. Uh, the gray zone did a fantastic job of of um, talking about some of the uh, weird shit. That's an apt phrase. <laughs> All the weird shit that is in this fucking bill. Uh, first of all, it's almost 5,600 pages long. The largest book I remember reading was about 400 pages long, roughly, maybe a little bit more. And I think it was a Gabriel Garcia Marquez book, Thousand Years of Solitude. Fantastic book. That's a book I, I got to... If I still have it in my parents' storage somewhere, that is a book I would love to pick up and just read. I also just read books in general. Uh, I don't get the opportunity to read as many books as I would like, and I have uh, plenty of books that I would like to read. Um, anyway, um, that's the longest book I've read, between 400 and 500 pages. Uh, this bill was over three times that amount of pages. And, you know, you had 400 some odd Congress people that were supposed to read this bill and understand it. I don't think the human brain uh, at the at the level that it's at is capable of comprehending 5,600 pages worth of legal dribble. <clears throat> and I'm using that term legal dribble because that's exactly what it is. It's a lot of legalese. Uh, it's a lot of fucking like loopholes and contradictory statements that the layman are, are, are never to understand. And I think this brings up you know, a video that got cr- completely killed on YouTube, by the way. <clears throat> YouTube and Facebook completely killed this video. Um, it got shown to nobody, and when I reshared it, I believe four people saw it. Uh, and, and I'm not the only person to have talked about this, but Mike Gravel is the person that initially came up with this idea where laws should be no more than, I believe, 500 words, uh, 500 words, and they should be written in plain English so that everybody understands them, <clears throat> whether you went to law school or not. Uh, and, you know, um, the, the legislators like this bill. They introduced this bill. Everybody can read it. It's on a public forum. You see people. You, you, can, you can view people talking about it and, and giving their reasons for why this bill is, what this bill is. And then... People will vote for it, right? We dictate what legislation gets passed and what doesn't. Uh, We would also dictate what laws we would like to see written. So, you know, we have this force to vote movement that's going on right now to get Medicare for All up for a vote in the United States Congress. If, If... we lived in, a, in an actual democracy of any kind, which we don't. We live in an oligarchy and a plutocracy uh, because this is a stolen democracy and it's run by capitalism and capitalism doesn't really allow you to have uh, a true democracy. It allows you to have uh, an unequal, unjust economic system running uh, politics, running the, the nature of, of rules and laws and the way people live their lives. Uh, so this is not a democracy by any any stretch of the imagination. This is not a representative democracy, and it's not a republic. It is an oligarchy. Let's call it what it is. But if we had some kind of a democracy, then we would very easily be able to get Medicare for All written and put up for a floor vote. Uh, more than that, I mean, people would have voted for it, and 72% of the people uh, want Medicare for All, according to a Fox News poll. <laughs> According to a conservative news poll, 72% of the people. That's a super majority. So, you know, we, we, and we know, 
Congress people don't even fucking read their bills. They have interns summarize shit for them. Uh, so again, it's like why are why are interns doing the job that a Congress people are paid hundreds and thousands of dollars, uh, millions and millions of dollars every single year to do? Fifty six hundred page bill is ridiculous, and they snuck some shit in there. Uh, and you know you have real journalists like the people at the Gray Zone. And I talked about earlier this year how Gray Zone uh, is not considered to be a, a, a reputable journalistic resource by Wikipedia because Wikipedia is run by an Ayn Rand fanboy that doesn't... They, they discredit fucking Julian Assange, who's never had to retract a statement. And, and they say that New York Times is, is a reputable news source. And over the course of the last five years, I've watched them lie. They lied about Lee Camp. I was at that show. They lied about uh, the that they lied about Lee. I was with Lee when he was working on his re- re- rebuttal piece. I was in New York City. I opened for Lee in the New York City show, and then I opened for Lee a couple weeks later in Atlanta when he was working on his rebuttal piece. I watched them lie, and they're considered reputable by Wikipedia. Bullshit. Anyway, the gray zone outlined um, all of the, uh, what's a polite way of saying, c- conveying this, horse shit, and that's me being polite, uh, if you want me to get mean, I can, but, you know, I don't want to get tone policed, uh, I want people to actually be able to listen to this, so I'm being polite, uh, the, the horse shit that is in this quote-unquote omnibus bill is, oh no, Oh, that's still going. That's not good. Red light, please. Red light, please. Okay. The horse shit that's actually in this fucking bill. Uh, The Gray Zone has fucking did a really, really great job. A really, really great job with it. And I highly recommend you read it. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to cover all of it because then this whole video would just be two and a half hours long of me covering this 5,600 page fucking bill. Um, but, you know, again, if we had what Mike Ravel suggested, bills, bills like these wouldn't particularly exist and we wouldn't have to worry about our internet freedoms being crushed uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, the, the continuation of the uh, horrific American empire. So here's the thing. Uh, there's billions and billions of dollars being put into something called democracy programs. Yeah, democracy programs. That's what they call it. I love that they have the fucking balls to call it democracy programs. The regime change wars. That's what they are. That's what they really are. The regime change wars. It's code for coups to be run in other countries. They're, they're, oh, they're bringing democracy programs. No, they're going to kill people. They're going to run fucking assassination programs, and they're going to run coups like they have in countries like fucking Venezuela and Bolivia and Iran. And it doesn't matter what you think about these countries. It doesn't matter whether you agree with their leadership. It doesn't matter whether you think that their country is doing the right thing or not. Because some a lot of the shit that Iran has done I disagree with, but I also don't think that the CIA should be going in there and running a fucking coup. I don't think our intelligence communities should be trying to you know, install leadership into that country under the guise of democratic... Uh, the, the democratic process or de- democracy programs, that's not what they're fucking doing. They're changing regimes so that it benefits the capitalism in America. And this omnibus fucking spending bill that even AOC voted for has billions of dollars 
for these quote-unquote democracy programs. You guys remember all that democracy we bought, brought to Iraq? You guys remember? You guys remember the democracy we brought into Venezuela? Oh, it must be that democracy we bought brought into Bolivia that failed. All we have been dropping democracy on foreign countries for months and years and decades now. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Though those are bombs. Those are bombs that we're dropping, not democracy. Not democracy. But what about the what about the democracy through the foreign aid that we give to people? Oh, I'm sorry. Those are economic sanctions. That's economic warfare is what what we're giving to people. And lying about it and spinning it is spinning it through the propaganda machine that is corporate media. We'll come out and be like, "Oh my god, look at these people are starving in this country." Meanwhile, they're not. The only reason why they haven't received the resources and and the money that they truly deserve, like like for example, the country of Venezuela, is because of American economic sanctions. Because America says we don't like this leader because this leader won't let us come into this country and just take whatever the fuck we want. So we're going to install someone that will. That's what that's what this spending bill has has uh, put for put billions of dollars forward to do. There's also six point one seven five billion dollars uh, on f- foreign military financing. Uh, that just means they're gonna we're funding the war machine. Uh, they're, they're, we're funding wars is what that means, and that brings the total military budget for this year, the war budget this year. To upwards of seven hundred and forty-seven billion dollars, uh, one hundred and twelve point nine million dollars on military training and education. Uh, so now it's upwards of seven forty-eight billion uh, for the war budget. And throughout this thing, what I didn't notice was any additional funding for veteran care. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, The argument against anybody that is anti-war is that they are also anti-veteran, which is far from the fucking truth, because if you're truly anti-war, what you want to see is no more fucking veterans. No more middle-class young men and women and non-binary transgender folks going and fighting fucking rich people's wars. Which is exactly what it is. And if these fucking cretins in Congress actually gave a shit about any of this, they would have put in a couple hundred million dollars worth of care for veterans. But they don't. The war is about their own personal profit and greed. And and putting the American empire above anything else. And once you've served their purpose and you've gone and fought their wars, they do not give a shit about you. You you want to know when the when the soldiers actually get taken care of when they continue to serve in the military. Once they're out, it they don't no one they don't give a shit. The military is America's greatest socialist secret. It really is. They could have put veterans care into this. They could have they could have put 200 million dollars into the VA to help veterans get the the services that they need. You thank them for their service, but but you can't fucking do anything about it? They're cretins, is what they fucking are. And the propaganda about anti-war activists, comedians, and so on, that we're anti-veteran is total bullshit. 
most veterans end up being anti-war. I met a few that are still pro-war. I met a few. But most veterans, after they've seen what, what warfare really is, become anti-war. Continuing forward, uh, there's more money for overseas... What does that say? Contingency operations. Overseas contingency operations. That's that's another thing that's fun that's in there. Overseas contingency operations. That basically means uh, endless wars. They want to continue their endless wars. So uh, if they if if it seems like things are settling and they're like, oh man, the troops might get to come home. Uh oh, there's a there's a contingency that we need. Here's money for that. Money money for for never ending wars to continue destabilizing a region that doesn't need to be destabilized. We're bringing freedom by destroying your cities. At this point, the war budget is well over $800 billion. Uh, $300 million goes to prevent Chinese influence. And uh, the article points out the CIA coup, that the CIA was using activists in Hong Kong last year, maybe a year or two ago. Uh, I'm not well versed in that I, I, I know the general gist of what happened um, but you know basically the CIA was using activists to spread anti-Chinese propaganda um, and and the, and this bill is solidifying it, $300 million to basically put more anti-Chinese propaganda out there uh, just in case just in case, just in case it wasn't enough now there, there's a, there's like I said there's a, there's a ton more in this bill uh, about the Middle East about Iran and um, you know keep keeping those wars going expanding the war wars and basically trying to get into a hot war with Iran uh, but the craziest of all of it is. They want to control the reincarnation of the Dalai Lama, the succession of the Dalai Lama. Uh, and I know Steve Poikinen from uh, Action for Assange uh, pointed out to me on Twitter when I, when I just think this is so fucking funny that, that America wants to control reincarnation. So, so how, do they, how do they control this metaphysical, spiritual thing is that they try to legislate it. They're like the laws of a bunch of corrupt, crony, old fucking people will control divinity. Now, Steve, Steve Poinkinen did point out that, that the Dalai Lama has been in the, in the pockets of the CIA for a long time, uh, something that I am not, again, not particularly well-versed in, but I trust Steve, and it's definitely on the list of researching because it's, Hilarious that the CIA is like, how do we control spiritualism? <laughs> this seems to be something we can make money off of. Because <laughs> that's what capitalism does. Everything is a fucking dollar sign. There's no, there's no limits on, on what does and doesn't have a dollar. Your fucking health has do- a dollar sign on it. And, and, and you don't think that the Dalai Lama and spiritualism is going to have a dollar sign on it? Of course it is. It's a matter of how to use the CIA and the intelligence communities to control it. And of course, what, what does divinity always listen to? It's a piece of American legislation. This is the thing that truly is a little scary for people like me. Uh, all your favorite content creators is the uh, the provision that basically says that if if uh, there's a copyright claim, then we can we can be fined and imprisoned. So you know, if I want to use a journalistic source, I want to use a video, um, especially videos like uh, like the like leaked audio and stuff, and you want to play the leaked audio, if it's up on you, if it's like up somewhere at, on somebody else's channel or like it's it's copyrighted or something even if we give credit and say this is from this source the content creators that use it can still get fined and still can get put into prison 
because they want to fuck over copyright laws. Look, copyright laws are already insane, right? Like, I, I've, I have a graphic design degree, and that was always part of the, uh, the issue of, like, when you work for an agency is, does that work belong to you in any capacity, or does it all belong to the agency? Can you, can you showcase what you've done or you've trapped? Like, if, if the agency says it all belongs to us and you can't use this even in your portfolio or your website to show that this is work that you've done and, and you know, showcase your talents, um, that, is, that is, you know, control and, and, and it mucks up copyright laws. So, you, do, you know, it's like you do own, your own, you do own the, the shit that you make, but so does the agency. So it gets very complicated. And now it's just getting even more complicated. That was part of this omnibus fucking COVID spending bill that they put out there. Once again, something that AOC fucking voted for. Rashida Tlaib, I believe, was the only person in the squad that didn't vote for it um, and had the amendment, which we're going to talk about too, uh, for $2,000 checks to be given to the American people. Uh... But, and then AOC just wrote her name on it. Like, AOC turned out to be that kid that, uh, you know, is in the group project that doesn't do anything, and they, like, play video games and eat all the snacks, but then at the end, they're just like, I put my name on it, I get the credit for it. You know, like, that's that's who AOC became in terms of that bill. One of the things that did pass, I, I briefly brought this up at the beginning of this, uh, at the uh, you know the beginning of this video, is save our stages. The the Save Our Stages Act did get passed. Uh, Fifty billion, I believe, is going to independent venues, small small businesses, independent venues, bars, restaurants, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, put 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 forward by uh, the National Independent Venue Association, NEVA. Uh, I had Jordan Grobe on my podcast to talk about this effort. Uh, great podcast, good, good people trying to do good things. Now, here's here's the thing: um, Forbes, which is what reported on on this uh, on the on the passage of the Save Our Stages Act, claims that it's Chuck Schumer and Amy Klobuchar who really made this happen. Which is bullshit. They didn't even know about it until Save Our Stages went and presented their fucking legislation that venue owners wrote. Venue owners got together and decided that there needs to be a coalition to help save, save uh, independent venues across this country. And, and they wrote the bill and presented it to Congress. And Amy Klobuchar was like, yeah, this seems like something that'll make me cool or whatever. And it was like, yeah, okay, a bill like this needs some kind of mainstream support to get off the ground. Uh, and, and it did. And again, one of the members went and, and testified in front of Congress to basically be like, this bill needs to pass. You know, uh, well, they, they talk in the podcast. He brought up um, one one dollar spent at a venue is, is about twelve dollars spent in the community. And with venues being shut, that's essentially thirteen dollars per person that is just not coming into this commu- these communities anymore. Um, which is, you know, terrible and sad, and that's why our communities are, are suffering as much. So that's, that's a positive in this, but that's one very small positive. In, in this there are plenty of fucking horrific horrific things and and Forbes isn't even giving credit to the to the people that made this happen this is not this, this bill is is the longest bill that's ever been written. It's the worst bill that's ever been written in American history. Earlier this year, we had a corporate fucking giveaway.
a corporate fucking giveaway. And now we have a giveaway to the Empire. We have a giveaway to the Empire. And pittance, $600 to the American people is all, all they passed. I know some people are going to get upset at, uh, about me criticizing AOC, as, as most progressives often do, and, most, uh, and all faux progressives often do. Uh, if you're honest with yourself, you know which camp you belong in. But if you haven't turned this video off because I, I dare to criticize AOC, think about it this way. Bernie and AOC voted for uh, that the the first shit stimulus bill uh, that gave us twelve hundred dollars. After all of them, AOC, Bernie, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, eventually Kamala Harris jumped on board. Eventually, Cory Booker jumped on board with two thousand dollars a month. Ilhan Omar was also talking about a UBI, and. You know, within weeks they they bent their they bent the knee and they settled for a one time payment of twelve hundred dollars in hopes that they can renegotiate and get more pe- money for the American people. Well, all they were able to do was get you six hundred dollars, a total of eighteen hundred dollars in nine months during the 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 worst pandemic this country has ever seen, the world has ever seen, and and uh, a manufactured depression worse than the Great Depression, which was also manufactured. The collapse was caused by uh, the the uh, authors of uh, the Federal Reserve Act. And the argument they used to get this bill passed uh, was an argument I have heard uh, a lot, which is, "Well, you gotta you gotta watch out for the greater good. I'm, uh, there there are more good things uh, in this bill than not." Is sort of the argument that you heard. Well, there's positive aspects, and I'm and I'm voting for the positive aspects of this bill. Yes, there's a bunch of corporate giveaways. Yes, Wall Street gets more money, but oh, PP, uh, PPPs and the PUA, that's important. And I'm not saying that it isn't important. Those were very important things to have in that bill that probably helped a lot of people survive through the summer. But this stimulus bill, that argument doesn't work. That argument doesn't work. So for Rashida Tlaib to be the only person in the squad that really pushed back against the party bosses to say, no, I'm not going to fucking vote yes on this bill. You're giving the American people next to nothing and this is a insane fucking build build to expand the American empire through war and justification of war this bill is propaganda and the only amendment she could get through was two thousand dollars But for AOC to say, I'm going to vote on this anyway, uh, and then tack my name on to something else that some other representatives... No. You can't come up with the justification that there was anything good in this bill to fucking vote for. The justification of six, $600 is, is nothing. For a lot of people, it won't even pay bills. It won't even cover rent. We're about to see major evictions across this country. Nobody should have passed this bill. It should have been completely overhauled. It should have been looked at as absolutely disgusting. You should have thrown the bill out the second it hit the floor when you heard the word democracy programs. There's no justification for someone like AOC who calls herself a progressive to vote for a neocon, neoliberal fucking 
war boner bill. This is a war boner bill. This is just them having a boner for their own... For the fucking... For war! And now people are like, yay, she's... Oh, she, look, at, look at how well she did with Rashida and... They're, they're helping. They're not fucking helping. I'm so mad. My beard hair is getting into my, my mouth. That's how mad I am right now. This fucking bill is a joke. And it is horrific. If you, I mean, this is how authoritarian uh, regimes start. But we've, I mean, we've been doing these kind of bills forever. They sneak certain things in, right? Like, oh, we'll do UBI, but we're also going to put this bill that lets us just bomb anybody we get to deem a socialist forever. We're just going to, you guys want to pass that? And you should be like, no, we want to pass the socialism thing. And and if you don't, we want to pass the UBI thing. And if you don't want to just look, look at this bill all on its own, then I don't think we have much to discuss here. The end. It's a negotiation, and guess who always loses in the negotiation? The people. Corporations, the war machine, always, always get whatever the fuck they want. No, no arguments, no discussions. Then, when it comes down to helping the people, there's always a discussion. Oh, it's it's got to be strategic. That's why this bullshit is happening with force to vote. It, it should not be an argument. There, there is almost no reason for anybody to sit there and say, oh, we can't do Medicare for all. We, we, we can do Medicare for all. It's a matter of political will that we don't. It's the same thing. It's a matter of political will that, the, that, that legislation isn't written for, for regular people to understand. Which is why journalists have to break it down and comedians have to break it down. We are doing what fucking Congress people, elected by the uh, 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 by, by the people, are, are are not doing, are unwilling to do. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed the content in this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. My content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Uh, sign up for my email list. Uh, uh, that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that I put out there. Um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.